Hello everyone, this is Professor Michelle Jansi from the Department of Management Studies. So today I would be uh, discussing on the topic HRM in Service Sector Management, which is one of the specialization subject of TYBMS HR. Uh, so let us move on to the first concept that is service. According to Philip Kotler, a service is any activity of benefit that one party can offer to another that is essentially intangible and doesn't result in the ownership of anything. Its production may or may not be tied with the physical product. The services are those activities which satisfy wants. Now let us move on to its features. So the first one is intangibility. Services are intangible in nature. As compared to the pr uh, uh, production of a tangible product which can be felt, which can be smelled, which can be tasted, which can be hold, here in service sector services can only be experienced. So services are highly intangible in nature. The second characteristic is perishability. Services cannot be stored. Production and consumption happens simultaneously. Here, for example, if you have purchased airline tickets and if you fail to use it, you cannot reuse the ticket. It, its validity expires. So services per are perishable in nature. Second one, third one is inseparability. Services are inseparable in nature, which means service cannot be separated from the service provider. Unlike production of tangible product where once the product is purchased by the buyer, the ownership gets transferred from the manufacturer to the purchaser. Here in services, you cannot separate the services from the service provider. Same with ownership as well as we had already discussed, the ownership of services cannot be transferred unlike products where you can transfer the ownership from the manufacturer to the buyer. Next one is heterogeneity. So here it is also referred to as variability. This is because of lack of consistency. For example, if you have availed services from any particular service sector, you cannot expect the same quality of service the next time from the same person. It's because as the services uh, varies from person to person, at the same time, from time to time also the services, the quality of service may vary. The last one is simultaneity. As we all know, so during the production and consumption of services, both the buyer and the seller has to be present at the same place. Production of services cannot be stored. Once the production happens, immediately it gets consumed by the service consumer. Now let us see what service sector is. The service sector is the main channel through which the primary and secondary sector of the economy operate. Before the rebuzzing of the economy, the sector was categorized into six different subsectors like transportation, storage and communication, wholesale, retail, restaurants and hotels, finance, insurance, retail estate and business services, government services, community, social and personal services, private and non-private services. Now let us see what are the reasons for the growth of service sector. The first one is product complexity. Nowadays, the products that we purchase, especially consumer durables, the technology used and the products the, uh, uh, used here, if it gets repaired, it is not possible by a normal technician to repair it. You need experts to get it repaired. Because of the complexity of the product also, the, uh, there is a growth, increasing growth in the service sector. Next one is greater life expectancy. According to the world development uh, record, it has been proved that the life expectancy of humans have increased. The, the, this has led to the growth of the uh, service sectors like medical, you know, insurance uh, sectors, etc. Now let us see the next uh, reason that is economic changes. Now as you can see there is an increasing rise in the income of the consumers. Therefore uh, as they can even save as a disposable income that could be even invested on uh, travels, uh, restaurants. They can even uh, uh, spend it on their leisure activities and that has also led to the rise in the uh, gr growing rise in the service sector. Next is the changing role of women. Um, uh, compared to earlier days, now you can see that women are also working and they are uh, earning equivalent to the remuneration earned by the male uh, employees. So with this in uh, growing changes, this has led to service sectors like um, uh, health care, personal cares, uh, then travels, tourism, fast food resorts, uh, etc. 
Next is cultural changes. As you can observe uh, today, the young couples nowadays feel that uh, either they are postponing their parenthood or they are preferring to no not have kids. The reason behind it, they feel that it is as a commitment and this commitment will lead to a demand in their uh, expenses, increasing expenses and therefore this has lead also lead to uh, travel, tourism, uh, insurance, retail uh, sectors, reasons for the uh, retail sectors to grow so now let us move on to the next concept which is relationship marketing it is a marketing approach that acknowledges the importance of both the buyer and the seller in the marketing process the core concept is to build a long-term relationship with customers relationship marketing views marketing as an exchange where both buyers and sellers help shape the direction and outcome of the product that will be offered to the market now let us see what are the importance of relationship marketing it has been observed that it is important for a business to maintain relationship with not only it its customers but also with the suppliers with the employees with the uh, influence market because uh, it is necessary to maintain relationship with all internal as well as external stakeholders if in uh, order to retain and grow their business now let us see the last concept of uh, uh, the which is known as the six market model which was found by pain in the year 1997 uh, which covers customer market referral market supplier market internal market recruitment market and influence market the main objective behind the six market model is to understand the stakeholder uh, their uh, needs and accordingly satisfy that so first that we, uh, first which we see that is customer market it is very important for the service organization to understand what the requirement of customers are and accordingly work on satisfying their needs. The next one is the referral market. Once the customer becomes loyal to a particular service sector, they start recommending their um, products and services to other friends and families and thus they become the referral market. So it's very important for the organization to consider them as the va most valued customers or we can call them priority customers and make offers and um, you know see to it that their requirements are fulfilled. Next one is supplier market. So if you maintain a good relationship with the suppliers, uh, then they, they are also the main source of providing you information about the market. And at the same time, they'll also be providing quality raw materials to you. Next is the internal market, which is also known as uh, our uh, customers, suppliers, as well as employees. So when maintaining good relationship with this internal market would lead the organization to achieve its productivity efficiently and effectively. Next is recruitment market. Here it refers to the employees. As we term employees as internal customers and also internal kings, it's very important for the organization to maintain good relations with the internal market and understand what their requirements is, involve them in the decision making processes and this is how you can maintain relationship with them. And the last one is influence market. So here we can term influence market as the um, social media influencers, the reporters, uh, the medias, which is helping you to promote your organization to the public. Now let's see the role of service employees in service process. Here we have termed them as they are the service, they are the organization in the customer's eye, they are brand and they are the marketers. Basically service employees are the people who design the services. They, were, they have a different role to play in service organization. They design services, they perform the services, they have to empathize the requirement of the customer, they have to fulfill the requirement. In the eyes of customer, they are the people who uh, represent the organization. So it's been expected that they play the major role uh, in promoting the organization and creating reputation for the firm. With this, I come to the end of this presentation. Thank you.